I'm Nick Snow, watching government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. The Obama administration may have hoped its final rule for coal-fired power plants would lead to more renewable and alternative technologies being deployed. But its initial impact simply may be more demand for natural gas to generate electricity, several Washington observers told OGJ. That's what Bronco Terzik, a former Federal Energy Regulatory Commission member who is now a managing director at Berkeley Research Group, said he expected for the short term. The quicker coal-fired plants are retired, the sooner a dispatchable power replacement will be needed, he explained. Alternatives and renewables are intermittent. Natural gas is the dispatchable fallback. We are doing an analysis, said Frank Macchiarola, Executive Vice President at America's Natural Gas Alliance. Certainly, the proposed rule that came out last year showed there's a real potential for greater gas demand. Compliance will make a difference, particularly as states develop implementation plans. In April, gas had the greatest share of U.S. electricity generation for the first time, he added. I think that is just the start of the trend. A U.S. Energy Information Administration analyst said in early August that the Independent Energy Data and Forecasting Service would study the Clean Power Plan closely before suggesting possible impacts. EIA's Natural Gas Monthly that month noted that domestic demand decreased year-to-year -year in May for a third consecutive month in three of the four main sectors. The fourth, gas for power generation, quote, increased significantly from last May. We have to be careful in the short term not to read too much into the April and May numbers as we have a good deal of conversion behind us, cautioned Frederick Lawrence, Vice President of Economics and International Affairs at the Independent Petroleum Association of America. In the longer term, there will be tailwinds from overall sectoral push, he continued. But there are other factors in play as well. Industrial demand, liquefied natural gas exports, gas market penetration in the Northeast, West Coast hydropower, and transportation. Tim Borsma, acting director of the Brookings Institution's Energy Security and Climate Initiative, said the CPP, quote, probably supports a trend less incentivized by policies and more by market forces. I think it reinforces a process that's been underway for some time. Whether that accelerates is less certain. There are unquestionably challenges in storage and transportation. But if you lay out all the benefits and challenges, it's obvious why gas is taking a larger market share in power generation, Machiarola said. It is the most cost-effective compliance fuel for this role, he maintained. But it's cost-effective without the rule. You're seeing a shift to it, not just from a regulatory standpoint, but also in response to market forces. That's watching government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.